and turn in your King James Bible to Titus chapter 1. Um, <clears throat> I'm seeing a lot of this th stuff again about this uh, salvation that's all up here, the Gnostic salvation, the Gnostic gospel, where you just believe it's all up here. You don't have to call upon the name of the Lord. You don't have to repent of sin or anything. There doesn't have to be any changes in your life after you get saved. Um, and it's Gnosticism is all that that is. But in keeping with modern terminology and um, the whole thing that came out there in 2020, uh, for the first time ever, we had disease that was called asymptomatic. You can now be sick without feeling like you're sick. So in keeping with modern <clears throat> science, uh, 1 Timothy 6.20, um, let's go with asymptomatic salvation. Why not? You can be saved and not feel that you're saved, have no changes in your life, um, be the same person you were before your salvation that you are after your salvation. You turn from unbelief to belief, the whole thing, and it just produces no symptoms at all. So let's just go with that. Asymptomatic salvation. Sounds kind of nice, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, Titus chapter 1. Let's see what the Bible has to say. Titus chapter 1, verse 10 through 16. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. Uh, uh, news media and all the other people out there today. Especially they of the circumcision. Whose mouths must be stopped. Who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. A lot of people out there getting filthy rich off of uh, giving medical advice and other things out there. Yeah. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Um, again, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. All right. There's a lot of people going around and they're trying to get all this Jewish stuff and I want to be Torah observant. And they're going, taking people back onto the law and you have to follow the Ten Commandments and all this other stuff. New Testament condemns it over and over again. Well, look at verse 15 and 16. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God. See? It's up there in their head. But in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Um, I did a whole series of videos on Jack Hiles. Jack Hiles was one of the most evil men of the 20th century. Um, I think he died in 2001, so he came a little bit into the 21st century, unfortunately. Defiled a little bit. But the guy loved to just flaunt his sin. You, look, you can look and see him, and he's there preaching up in front of the church and his wife's over here and Jenny Nishik, his secretary's over here and he's sleeping with both, just to be very blunt about it. He's having an adulterous affair with his secretary, his deacon's wife. His own daughter came out and admitted it, you know? And then there's another one that he did and he's got this, he's got this thing where he's praying, you know, and he's kneeling down in, in his office and be, behind him you can see a hidden door between his office and his secretary's office. Just flaunting his sin. His son David comes out and he's having perverted affair after perverted affair. Marries a porn star. Um, porn movie, you know, girl that acted in that stuff. Nice. And Jack Hiles is covering up for it. Sending him to other churches and things and whatever else. Just scandal after scandal after scandal. And that man taught that there's no repentance of sin. Salvation is all up here. You turn from unbelief to belief and you go out and you have the little prayer that you, you memorize and you can, you know, you knock on the door and whatever else. Hello, I'm from First Baptist Church in Hammond, Indiana. And, and I would like to ask you today, if you died today, well, do you know for sure where you would go? I know this is a very important question. Let me ask you again. Let me just explain it to you. And, and you force the person into this conversion experience that happens up here. And then you say... I got a soul saved. I've won souls. I've won them by the thousands. I've just won souls and won souls. And then you go into the church and they have these special little things and you go in there and how many souls did you win? Did anybody win a thousand this week? Yes, I won a thousand. I'm not joking. I've proved it. And that poisonous philosophy, that uh, Gnosticism, 
where it's all you envision things up here in your mind. There's no actual physical changes or supernatural things that happen to you when you get saved. You know, there's salvation is without symptoms. Okay? That thing that happens to you, it just is all up here in your mind. And then you just kind of stick with it for a while. And then if you want to leave, you, then that's one of the converts that didn't work out. They say, I mean, I, I've done this whole thing. I've been through this whole thing. I've dealt with people. You go and, oh, yeah, I used to go to that Baptist church guy standing there smoking a cigar. Or, or, yeah, I don't even believe in God anymore. You know, whatever, go away. But they were Baptist at one point in time. Went to church every time the doors were open. I can't tell you how many of those I've encountered over the years. You know, <clears throat> false converts. Second Peter chapter 2. Show you another example of false converts here. Salvation without symptoms. Salvation without proof. Sure, why not? Um, church buildings are a real good place to, to go if you want to pick up women. There's some real floozies there. Uh, some real whores that uh, if you say the right things and whatever else, you can get some good ones there. Um, and, you know, you get into the Sunday school ministry that you can go after children, too. I'm not telling anybody to do that, obviously, but I'm saying that's what happens. There's all kinds of pedophilia, and it's not just the Catholics either. I had a friend, one of my good friends growing up, and uh, he was molested as a child in a Methodist church. Methodist camp that they went to, a little summer camp thing, had a guy molest him. Got older in his 20s, finally couldn't take it anymore, walked outside of the house, shot himself in the head. So all oh, the Catholics, they got a bunch of child molesters in the Catholic Church. Yeah, you got them in the in the Protestant churches too, including the Baptists. Knew a guy, knew a brother the one time, twin little eight-year-old girls, and the Baptist pastor, King James only Baptist Ruckman taught pastor, was molesting his eight-year-old daughters. Guy took the pervert to court and whatever else and the people of the church were mad at the, the brother said you shouldn't have done that we should have settled it within the church <laughs> yeah it's called uh, we'll let the pastor go we'll just give you a little payoff little payout there and you just kind of go away with your children that have been molested and permanently destroyed mentally second peter chapter 2 verse 12 start there but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to ride in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Do you ever have the Sunday fellowship thing and whatever else? <laughs> mm-hmm having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, church buildings, cursed children. So it says they're children. They're pretending to be children. They're pretending to be saved. I get this thing all the time. Well, brother, what do you mean false converts? There are no false converts. It's just carnal and, and good Christians. That's all. All you have to do is just believe. You're going from unbelief to belief. And as soon as you get to the belief thing, I believe facts in the Bible, I'm automatically saved. I declare myself to be saved. You get faker devils like Robert Breaker and a lot of these other devils, and they come out and they say, you don't have to even call upon the Lord to be saved. Just believe in your mind, man. That's Gnosticism. It's wicked. It's satanic. It's of the devil. But hey, you get your asymptomatic salvation, don't you? I want salvation where I can just pretend I'm a Christian. I can go to my little church building and I can be a raving pervert and whatever else I want to be. And I just learn the right things to say. You see, I did a sermon a while back called Church Buildings Are for Teaching Lost People Religious Things. And it's exactly true. That's what church buildings are all about. A lot of these guys like Breaker, Robert Breaker, and Gene Kim, they're Ruckman regurgitators. That's all that they are. They got years worth of uh, material here. Just look at the commentaries and they can preach their messages. Gene Kim, I mean, you watch the guy. You look at his church history videos. He's reading from a book. 
just standing there reading from a book. Oh, you know, doing the, you know, he draws these little goofy drawings. Can't even, guy has no artistic ability at all. And he draws these little goofy drawings and things. And, and he stands okay and he just keeps reading from a book. Thousands of views. Whoa, look at this. He's a great man of God. No, he's a regurgitator. And he tries to come up with stuff on his own and he's on his own and he's a total heretic. But he's got asymptomatic salvation, just like Robert Breaker. You don't have to prove that you're saved. There's no works involved in things after you get saved. After you get saved, get a hold of that one. And go ahead and lie about me. Put it out there, your little videos. Denlinger teaches works salvation and whatever else. No, I teach works comes after you get saved. Works meet for repentance. Unless you're a flaming pervert, Jack Hiles type of pervert that went from unbelief to belief and now you get to do whatever you feel like doing. Sin without conscience. Mm-hmm. Brute beast. Cursed children. Verse 15. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. The wages of unrighteousness. Boy, you got to get a hold of that one. You know, you can make a killing off of the stupid, gullible people out there that call themselves Christians. Get you a good church building. A couple million dollars, baby. Get that 501c3 tax exemption. Hey, man, you have a business now. I mean, you can make some serious dough. I mean, look at the Jack Hiles videos. You know, he's... And his advertisement, all we do is barely pay the bills. You know, and then he's preaching and I just bought this and I got a million dollars into this and a million dollars into that and I'm buying this. I don't even know what I'm using it for yet and it doesn't even matter. Screwing people over. That's what church buildings are all about. Verse 16, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with man's voice. Back in the Old Testament, the female donkey spoke with a man's voice miraculous thing of the Lord that he did there, forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water. You get around these guys, they get off camera, they won't talk about the Bible if their life depended on it. You get around me, anybody that knows me personally, yeah, it's all he talks about. It's all they talk about. They're a bunch of fanatics. Amen. Clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. The mist of darkness, weeping, outer darkness. The Bible talks about weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. That's what it's saying there. Their future is set. You start faking it with the Lord as a Gnostic heretic, God's going to reserve a place for you in hell. And you deserve it. Your damnation is just. You make merchandise out of God's people. Invest in... Uh, you know, the artificial intelligence bots to inflate the channel numbers that you have, the subscribers and the views and everything else. Mm -hmm. Your damnation is just. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. You can do whatever you want. You can now live without any kind of guilt, any kind of things, because all my sins are paid for, man. So I can do whatever I feel like doing without any conviction of conscience. That's what these people are. <clears throat> Verse 19, while they promised them liberty. That's what these false, you know, asymptomatic salvation people do. They promise other people liberty. I have liberty to do this. I have liberty to do that. Holy Spirit doesn't convict me. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought in bondage. Yeah. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Why? Verse 21, For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. They can read the commentaries. They can see. They can listen to videos like this and copy what I do. You can know. You can learn the right things to say. 
it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. They go right back to the world. Oh, I did that Christianity thing for a while. I was part of the Denlinger cult for a while. Oh, I listened to him. I thought he was a great man. And then I quit. Right back to the world. I have seen it thousands of times. Oh, no, Brother Brian, you don't understand. Oh, I understand perfectly. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's go there. I understand perfectly. Lost people want asymptomatic salvation. They desire it. They, oh, they lust after it. Well, hey, I tried that stuff and it doesn't work. Uh, I've seen people and they reject herbal health and things like that, natural health. Well, I tried it. it. It didn't work for me. I got sick the one time and I had a cold and I took some echinacea and it didn't work at all. So I just threw it in the trash and I went back to drinking my NyQuil and my, you know, antibiotics from the doctor and all the other stuff and whatever. Um, <clears throat> okay. What was your diet like when you were taking those herbs to cure you of your cold? What was your diet like? Were you drinking poison pop? Well, yeah. Were you eating junk food? Did you have a bunch of sugar in you? Did you detox from that stuff? Whatever else? The herbs didn't have a chance to heal you. Natural health doesn't work if you're living in complete toxicity all the time. In putting all kinds of toxic stuff into your life. Well, natural health just didn't work. So I quit. I went right back to eating my junk food all the time. Well, then you deserve the cancer that you're going to get someday. You see how it works? Oh, I did that stuff of getting away from sin and all this Bible-believing stuff, whatever. But I hated it, and so I quit. It didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 and 2. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if, if, you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Did you read it? Believed in vain. Is it possible to believe in vain? Yes. You know why? Because the Bible said so. And because experience says so. You will meet people. When you are a born-again Christian, you will meet people that say, yeah, I used to do that whole thing. Yeah, I used to be like you, and I, I got out of it. Now I'm a this or a that or whatever. And you look at them and you think, there's no way that this person's saved. There's just no way. They're corrupt. They're abominable. They're disgusting. They're a brute beast. But they used to go to church. They used to believe. But their belief was in vain. There was no connection to God. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. I'm sorry, John chapter, yeah, John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 21 through 37. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. And he saith unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, in context he's talking about God the Father, ye shall die in your sins. Study the passage. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. If you believe not that I am he, he's talking to them about the Father. Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. The Father is the soul. The soul is not the body. Okay, do you understand that? There is distinction in the Godhead. The soul and the body are separate but they can come together as one being. You have to understand that. 
The Godhead doctrine is not for lost people. That's why most people don't get it. And they try to go with the Trinity thing. And, well, it's three separate persons. There's no three separate persons anywhere in Scripture that relate to God. But that's another issue. Verse 28, Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Well, praise the Lord. They're, they just, they believed and that's all that it takes, right? They went from unbelief to belief. That's repentance. That's what repentance means. Unbelief to belief. That's one of the Jack Hiles things that he came out with. Uh, because he didn't want people to repent of sin and things, you know, and actually understand that you're a sinner and you've done things that are wrong before God and whatever. No, because see, Jack Hiles, he wanted to have his little money-making scam there where he could fornicate, you know, with his deacon's wife and, you know, the whole thing. You know, you can't have sin, you know, uh, in wickedness and things. That kind of gets in the way of that, you know, repentance of sin and all that. Many believed on him, verse 30. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Wait a second. Do um, you mean to tell me the Lord would put a condition on them? Oh, you believed in me? Okay. If, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Why would people say, I believe in Jesus, but I reject the truth of his word? I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for my sins, but I have no conviction of continuing in those sins. There doesn't need to be a new creature there. There doesn't need to be a new life. No change is required. What? And I don't mean you have to change just like that. Sanctification is a lifelong process. Please understand what I'm saying there. But the Lord will change your life. The Lord will do things. There will be symptoms of true conversion. I just don't get it. I, don't, I have never been able to understand these lost people. I mean, if you're going to be lost, just go with the world. Don't try to pretend that you're a Christian. I mean, I realize, like I said, hey, you can pick up chicks that way at the church buildings and you can get some pretty good money, some pretty good income. If you're too lazy to actually go out and do physical labor, uh, there's a great, you know, living that you can make from being a preacher boy. Uh, but, you know, I guess that's why they do it. But I don't really understand that. I mean, find something else to do besides irritating real Bible believers. Verse 33. They answered and said, or excuse me, they answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. So he says to the unbelieving Jews there, he says, okay, you don't believe in me because you don't believe this word. And all you people over there that claim to believe in me, you believe who I am? You believe that I'm God? You believe I'm your Messiah and whatever else you want to say about me? Okay, then you better continue in my word. There needs to be symptoms of your salvation. There needs to be a change in your life. Otherwise, you're just as fake as these Pharisees. You're caught up in the emotion of things right now and group think and whatever else because your friends are looking, oh, they believe, oh, I guess I should too. You know, no, that can turn out to be very false. And you see that, of course, with one minute they're saying, Hosanna to the son of David, you know, and they're, and they're praising Jesus. And the next they're saying, crucify him, crucify him. Accepting and rejecting, believing and then not believing. False converts do that all the time. John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verse 42 through 50. Let's read that. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him. Huh. Read John chapter 10, or Romans chapter 10, 
verses 9 through 13 down through there. Belief is not enough. Confession must also be made with the mouth. Hmm. So these people believed on him, but because of the Pharisees they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Man-pleasers. If I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ, Paul writes in Galatians chapter 1. You see, I want to believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I believe that he died for my sins, but I don't want to live for him. I don't want to have to live by the book. I don't want to have to give up certain sins and whatever else. I'll just kind of get away from that and I'll go to my little church where we have our little special get together and hey, who's that over there? Oh, baby, you know. Hey, you know, if my wife doesn't work out, you know, maybe maybe her over there. Oh boy. Happens all the time. All the time. You know it does if you've been through church buildings. You've seen the adultery. You've seen the fornication. You've seen the scandals that get covered up. Why? Because you have a bunch of people that make professions of faith and yet there's no signs that they actually got saved. There's no new birth for these people. Asymptomatic salvation. I believe I'm sick. Uh, I, I think I'm sick. Do you feel sick? No, I don't feel sick. But you don't have to feel sick to be sick anymore. Okay? It's asymptomatic. Sure. Uh, what are we reading to here? Acts chapter, or excuse me, John chapter 12, verse 42. Um, <clears throat> let's go to verse 44. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me seeth him that sent me. <laughs> Jesus was sent by the Father. He that seeth me seeth him that sent me. The Father's inside of Jesus as the soul. Godhead doctrine. Verse 46, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. You'll be judged by this book. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. There's a whole lot of stuff that I could go off on there. But the whole point is, brethren, um, this is the book. You know, a lot of people said that I had the uh, C-19 because of some of the stuff that I said. That's nonsense. Absolute total nonsense. I want to see if I'm going to be diagnosed with a disease of some kind or something. I want to see the science that proves these are the symptoms. This is why you get this way and feel this way and whatever else. Show me the science of it. Not just, oh, well, we can diagnose people, you know, and you don't even have to have symptoms. You can just be diagnosed over the Internet because, you know, Quarantine at home and just kind of do your own thing there and whatever else. And we'll just declare that you had C-19 and uh, that's all there is to it. Uh, no, no, no. I'm far more scientific than that. Show me the manual. Show me where it says here is when Koch's four postulates were followed and we have isolated and purified this particular virus in a laboratory setting. And this is the proof. This is what it does to you. These exact things have to happen and then it's this particular thing here that you got. I have to speak very veiled because I'm on Goonie Tube and they like to take my videos down randomly and whatever. But I want to see the science. I'm not against science. You want to say that I am sick of a certain thing? Then show me the science. Show me in written form where I am sick. I want to see my symptoms in a medical textbook saying this is what you have. And then I can take that and I can say, okay, if this is what I have in this medical textbook, then where's the cure? Here's the symptoms. I want the cure. Tell me what to do. Well, you have to lay in a bed and you have to put your feet in a thing of Epsom salt and you have to uh, drink, you know, four cups of chicken broth a day or something like, okay, is, and that cures it? 
Yes, it's been proved to cure it. Okay, I'm doing it. You see? I want to know what the symptoms are for my sin. Why do I qualify to be a lost man? What does it mean to be lost? Why do I deserve hell? Okay? I see it plainly there. Then what must I do to be saved? How can I prove that I've gotten the cure? I don't want asymptomatic salvation. I want to see the symptoms. I want to see proof that I've gotten saved. Show it to me in the book. Well, just uh, you just kind of make up your own thing and you just kind of go with what feels right. No, 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 no. I don't want that. I'm not interested in that. Had a family send us some things here. Still have some of it. Some of the natural health type of things and herbs and whatever else. We had some of the things at home, so we didn't need to take some of this. But um, And they gave us written instructions and whatever else about how to you know, help out with the sickness that we've been struggling with and how to make a, uh, you know, something that you can breathe in and whatever else. Forgetting the terms right now. And they gave us a little bottle of this stuff I've never seen before. It's a sort of an herbal tincture and uh, looking up information on that and everything else. And they've, uh, here's some limes and here's some fresh garlic and some fresh ginger. I think it's ginger root. Um, thank you to you out there who, who did that. I appreciate that very much. Um, to the family that sent that to us. Uh, very much appreciate that. Um, that kind of thing helps. Here, it's written instructions. This is what you have. There's some of the symptoms that you have, brother. Okay, here's how to cure it. That's what I'm interested in. Not just uh, do what feels right. <laughs> Be careful, brother. Acts chapter 8. All you have to do is believe. And you don't even have to ask God to save you. It's just such an easy thing. I was trusting in my asking. <laughs> okay. However that works. Uh, Acts chapter 8, beginning in verse 4. Belief is enough, huh? Let's see about that. Here's a good one, by the way, too. I'll give you a, a key scripture. For anybody that comes out and says, repentance is turning from unbelief to belief, which is kind of funny because I did a whole study on that, um, the sin of unbelief, I think it might be called, or I forget, it might not even be on YouTube anymore. They delete stuff sometimes. I don't even know they deleted it, uh, quite frankly, um, because my, my I have a, a secondary email account that I don't go to very much, and that's hooked up to my main channel on YouTube. So a lot of times I'll get notifications, oh, we took this video down, and I don't even see it for a month or two or something like that, so... Lord only knows if it's up there, but the whole point is unbelief is a sin. So even if you want to make that they turn from unbelief to belief, you're still saying you have to repent of sin, that that's the definition of repentance. Repentance is turning from unbelief to belief. Okay, well, unbelief is a sin, so you're still repenting of sin. But um, Acts chapter 8, verse 4, Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Hmm. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and they and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man. Now notice, it, notice the, again the very key words here in Scripture. But, it doesn't say end, there was a certain man. But, and it's switching over now to a false convert, and he is a false convert, we'll see that. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. Good Baptist preacher. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and to him they had regard because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. Don't tell me that they can't do it in church buildings. They do it all the time. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. 
Well, praise the Lord. He got saved then, didn't he? No, he didn't. Keep reading. He continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Sam Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Now look at this. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Huh? <laughs> Saying, Give me the, also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Now look at this. Oh, he's a saved man. He just made a mistake. He was an early young Christian, a carnal Christian. No, he was a false convert. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. Laying on the hands of the Holy Ghost and Holy Ghost being given. You could make that argument, but I believe it's salvation. It's in context. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. His heart wasn't right. It was all up here. He believed, see, but his heart wasn't right. He was wicked. <clears throat> Verse 22. Here's the good one. Here's the one that you use on these Gnostic heretics, the Hiles heretics that say repentance is turning from unbelief to belief. Look at this one. Repent, therefore, of this thy unbelief. No, uh, wickedness. Wouldn't that be repenting of sin? Mm -hmm. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. The thought of thine heart. You're wicked. You're lost. You're not a real true convert. And how do you know? Because look at his reaction. Verse 23, For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. He's still in his sin. In other words, then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me. Huh? That none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. Oh, Holy Father, pray for me and forgive me in my hour of the... Uh, no, hey, Simon, if you have true conversion here, then you pray. If I feel I'm out of fellowship with the Lord, I don't ask any of you people to pray to the Lord for me. Why would I? Why would you do the same with me? Brother Brian, I've, I've been sinning and I've been, I'm not really right with God and whatever else. Could you pray for me? No, you pray. <laughs> uh, you talk to God. Do you have a personal relationship with Him? Are you born again? Pray. You pray to Him. Yeah. My wife and I had an argument earlier and, and she's mad at me and we didn't actually, but she's mad at me. Could one of you please call her and talk to her? I, I'm a little afraid to talk to her right now because we had an argument. <laughs> huh? <laughs> no, no, uh, you don't talk to my wife. That's between me and her. Uh, well, my Savior, Jesus. My heart's not right with him. I did something really stupid. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I can't. I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I fell for it. Lord, God, please forgive me. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to put out there and have a video re prayer request. Could you please pray to the Lord for me? I messed up. <sighs> and yet I've heard Baptists. I believe it's Simon the sorcerer. I believe he was saved. Wow. Yeah, a sorcerer. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it, he believed. He believed the gospel, so he was saved. He was a saved man. We'll, we'll be in heaven with Simon the sorcerer. <laughs> Oh, boy. Simon the sorcerer had some good asymptomatic salvation. See, he's kind of the poster child for it, I guess. Acts chapter 19. Ooh, I'd like to buy that gift of the Holy Ghost. Boy, I could make some money then. Hey, what's it worth to you, Peter? You know, give me that gift of the Holy Ghost, man. I'd like to have that. Boy, you know, whew, I could bewitch the people then with sorcery. Yeah, he's a Christian. 
No, he's not. Acts chapter 19, verse 18 through 20. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Um, many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. I don't have any occult books here anymore, but uh, here's a good one. Good occult book with the satanic trinity symbol there, the trichetra. Um, everybody, I'm a Bible believer now. I put my faith in Jesus Christ and I now understand that the King James Bible is God's perfect word. Um, I used to use this new King James Version and I'm really sorry about that. I realize now, Brother Brian here, he showed me these uh, mistakes in here and oh, I can't believe I used this stupid thing. Um, I'm going to throw it into the fire now. Well, brother, that uh, hold on. You should have sold that on eBay. There, there, there's some good money in there. No, they burned them. 50,000 pieces of silver worth. Now, you know, let's just assume that a, a piece of silver was worth a dollar, just to make it clear. $50,000? See, maybe the, the pieces of silver, maybe they're only worth about 25, or, or we'll say 50 cents or something, half a dollar. That's still $25,000. It's a lot of money. Whoa, I have a big collection of occult books and I have, I have all this stuff and whatever else. And, and uh, man, I, I'm under conviction. I should probably sell it. No, you should probably burn it. Burn it. That's what you do with it. Um, you see, when you truly get born again, when you truly get saved, there will be things that will happen. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. A wonderful change in my life has been wrought? Yes. Things change. Oh, not for me. Not for me, brother. I, I'm still the same old sinner. I'm still the same old guy. You know, still hang out with the same old crowd and whatever else I'm praying for him. I tell him I believe in Jesus. and and uh, But, you know, it doesn't have to be any change and whatever. You didn't get saved. It didn't take. So, <laughs> that's going to be it for that study. I just wanted to put that one out there. Um, anybody that says that there's no change after salvation, after salvation, you don't clean your whole life up, and then God eventually saves you someday. I am being saved. You see, no, no. You come to God as a sinner. You pray. You ask Him to save you. Come to Him repenting of your self-righteousness. You say, oh, man, I'm, I'm just, I've messed up my life, and there's no chance that I can ever get out of this whole thing. I believe by faith what the Bible says, that Jesus died on the cross, was buried, that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. I believe that. I do, and I believe that this book says if I put my faith in that, that God can save me. God, I can't save myself. So I'm coming to you in an act of faith, and I want your grace. By grace are you saved through faith, not of works. I don't get saved by works. Those works come after as the Lord cleans up your life. Okay? The Lord wants to give you a good life down here on this earth. It isn't all about going to heaven when you die. That's there, but it's also how to clean up your miserable, wretched life. You know, the one that you want to get rid of when you come to be saved? You put your faith in Jesus Christ. And then it's up to Him to save you. And then it's up to His Holy Spirit to move in to your life until Christ be formed in you. And all of a sudden, hey, you know what? I don't appreciate that joke anymore. You know, I, this music is really starting to irritate me. I used to love this song, but I hate it now. And... That's, you know, hey, I don't appreciate what I saw on television. I, you know what? That, that was an attack on Jesus Christ, wasn't it? You know, I don't appreciate that. You know what? I don't feel right going out in town anymore with this muscle shirt on and whatever else. And the Lord starts to change you. And then you start to look in the Bible and you start to say, wow, those are the sins that the Bible condemns and those are going away from my life and this is what the Bible says happened to the Apostle Paul. 
I'm going through the same thing right now with my relatives. Wow. They're casting out my name as evil. They're saying that I'm false and I'm, I'm part of a cult and I'm... You know what? I think I got it. <laughs> I think it's real. Wow. God, they sorrow work with repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. I want real converts. I want to know that people that watch these videos, you come away and you say, I truly got saved. I'm not a false convert. I'll watch Brother Brian for a while, but I don't need him. He's not my Savior. He's not my God. Jesus is all the world to me. My life, my joy, my all. He is my friend. You know, he's my friend. The old hymn goes. There's so much that just ties in together. The old hymns in the King James Bible and, and your life as a Christian. I can have fellowship with any Christian back through the centuries. Language barrier might be a bit of an issue, but if they spoke English the whole way back through, which they didn't, but if they did, I could go back and have fellowship with Christians. Those that are born again. These modern professing Christians, they have no fellowship. There's no fellowship of the Spirit with anybody even 50 years ago. <laughs> so, just wanted to put that study together. Lord put that on my heart to get out there. Uh, just to kind of, I always have to kick this thing and just kind of keep it there and whatever because these asymptomatic salvation people, the Gnostic heretics that are out there that tell you that you just believe and then you're saved. You declare yourself to be saved because of your own belief. Um, you have that, and then you have the thing of there's no repentance of sin. Repentance means turning from unbelief to belief. And, and if you have to repent of sin, you have to remember every sin, you know? And the book of John, the word repent does not even appear in the book of John. You know, and they have all these little things that they do. Um, I could write a textbook sometime on these. You know, here's cult A, and here are the scriptures that they use to deceive you. Here's cult B, you know, and go down through the list. You know, here are the charismatics. Here's the scriptures that they use. Here are the Baptist, uh, Gnostic, you know, no prayer or anemic prayer, you know, to get saved. And then there's no repentance. There's no changed life. And here are the scriptures that they use. And, you know, and just go down through the list. I could do something like that. Um, rather big work to undertake but um so that is going to be it for this study uh thank you to everybody out there for praying for us i'm coming back to my abnormal self again i've never been normal so i can't say i'm coming back normal but uh my coughing is going away i was having a problem with coughing and, and things uh that's a lot less again the brethren they sent this natural cough syrup stuff uh, elderberry um, based on that, so that was that's pretty good. I've been taking that, um, and of course, nutritional health and everything else too. You know, high levels of vitamin C, and we've been introducing some more, you know, hot pepper into our food, um, which is also helping with the coughing issue. Um, I'm a lot more alert now. I feel more rested and more awake. Um, I was really tired through the whole sickness thing. I don't even know what it was. I have no idea. It doesn't matter what it was. It was not C19 because C19 was never proper, properly identified, but that's another issue. But um, I had this weird metallic, felt like I was walking around with a rusty pipe in my mouth or something. <laughs> it's just this weird metallic taste. Thankfully, that's disappearing now as well. So, um, but it, you know, honestly, it's been a blessing. Um, every time I get sick, I have my down days where I just think, Am I going to be going home to be with the Lord now? And, and I really just feel uh, down and sad. But then I can feel the prayers of God's people. And that is an amazing feeling. It's a miraculous feeling when all of a sudden, just out of the blue, and I can feel it. And I can just feel that people are praying for me. And I think, wow, I really feel good now. <laughs> and I love that. Thank you. Um, and then I start to think, okay, well, I tried this one thing and that didn't work at all. That actually made me a little bit worse. So now I started trying this thing over here and it's actually been helping a lot. I've educated myself then for the future. And of course, uh, I have a real hard time not working very hard. Um, and I don't like taking naps during the day, but boy, this sickness, 
it just it knocked me down it was just kind of I'd get up I'd eat and just be you know I'd get weak and it'd go lay down oh, okay I guess I will <laughs> you know and uh I mean there's times I get four or five hours of sleep at night and I get up and it's oh I have to get to work okay let's go work and there's been times I've worked seven days a week and yeah the whole thing I just uh put myself down and um a bit too much sometimes and the Lord has to kind of put me on it, my back sometimes and say, just sleep for a while. <laughs> you know, you need to take it easy there, boy. Uh, you're a little stupid sometimes here. Um, I'll confess my faults. So uh, don't fall for the asymptomatic salvation stuff, brethren. Um, please be careful about that. If you're newly saved, watch out for these people that try to take sin, repentance of sin, and they separate it, and oh no, it's just unbelief to belief, and it's just about thinking in your mind that you're saved, and there's no actual contact with God, and God doesn't have to change your life, and whatever, you yeah. run away from that stuff. So hopefully you've gotten some scriptures to use on these heretics if you get confronted by them. Uh, Simon the Sorcerer is a great one, and you'll, you'll meet them, you'll meet these heretics, and they'll say, Simon was a saved man. <laughs> I know he wasn't. So uh, that will be it. We will see you in upcoming videos. And as always, thank you for watching.